Hey everybody, I'm Holly, aka the Scientology Geek, and welcome back to part 15 of going over the data series. Now, we had just finished losing one's way last week, which I had an issue with, um, because you can actually see it a lot in Scientology and how they treat their staff. Uh, we were at building the ideal scene. That's where we're going to start off today. Uh, I don't really have any announcements, so without further ado, let's dive right in. So we were at building the ideal scene. To suppose one can instantly hit upon an ideal scene for any activity without further test is to be very fond of one's own prejudices. There is, however, a test of whether you have the ideal scene or not. Can you staticize it? Strangely, but inevitably, since we live in the physical universe where there is both time and association of beings with beings, and the physical universe and the physical universe with itself, there is a production consumption factor in all living. There seems to be a ratio between producing and consuming, and establishing it would probably resolve that strange subject, economics, as well as social welfare and other things. To think that Hubbard can solve economics by simply finding a, a, some ratio between producing and consuming... I'm assuming if there was such a ratio, it would be different for every single product and system, whatever the hell is being produced and consumed. I'm assuming there's a different ratio for each of those. It seems to be fatal to consume without producing. Many social observations teach us this. So I feel like he's talking about famines? I'm not quite sure. Well, no, that's lack of production. Well, that's lack of production and consumption. So yeah, it could be... It, I could see someone relating this to a famine. Evidently, one cannot, at the physical universe level, produce without consuming, and it seems that it's destructive to produce only and consume too little. One can produce far more than one consumes, apparently, but cannot consume far more than one produces. This seems to be true of groups. Some dreamers, puffing on a hash pipe of unreality, believe one can really be happy producing nothing and consuming everything. The idyllic ideal of a paradise where no one produces has been tried. In interviewing secretaries in New York, I found the larger percentage had the personal ideal scene of marrying a millionaire. Aside from there not being that many millionaires, the dream of idle luxury forever was so far from any possible ideal scene that it was busy ruining their lives and giving their current male escorts a life of critical hell. One, having married a boy who is fast on the road to becoming a millionaire, was so dissatisfied with him not being one right now that she ruined his life and hers. When did he interview secretaries in New York? Why did he interview secretaries in New York? Who said that it's their ideal scene? It's, it's, is he mixing the words ideal scene with fantasy? Because that seems like what it is. It'd be nice to marry a millionaire, but that doesn't mean that it's going to be their ideal scene that they're going to work towards forever that they're just going to ruin their lives over that seems irrational there's nothing wrong with having a fantasy of being with someone with a lot of money in short it sounds nice but having met a few who did marry millionaires i can attest that they were either not producing and failing as beings or were working themselves half to death so is he talking about women being at home and not working i assume and failing, and failing as beings. Wow, that's harsh. Or working themselves half to death. These no production dreams, like the harp in heaven, lead at best to suicidal boredom. Okay, Hubbard, that's a little, little bit of a stretch. Yet Madison Avenue's ads would have one believe that one and all should own all matter of cloth, wood, and metal just to be alive. There's a lot of ads, yeah. A whole civilization can break down, flop, on propaganda of no production, total consumption. The sweat that flies off a worker's paradise would rival the Mississippi. There's some sort of balanced ratio, and it favors, apparently, for pride and life and happiness, higher production of something than consumption. When it gets too unbalanced in values, something seems to happen. The unhappiness and tumult in current society is oddly current with the con 
The unhappiness and tumult in current society is oddly current with the Keynesian economic theory of creating want. It's a silly theory and has lately become to be abandoned, but it was in vogue 40 years or more, as I recall. It produced the welfare era of the psychiatrist and the total slavery of the taxpayer. So, for a quick reference, we're going to look up Keynesian economics. I feel like every policy letter is nothing but a history rabbit hole. So, Keynesian economics. Believe that because prices are somewhat rigid, that fluctuations in any component of spending, consumption, investment, or government expenditures cause output to change. If government spending increases, for example, and all other spending components remain constant, then output will increase. It's the various macroeconomic theories and models of how aggregate demand strongly influences economic output and inflation. The last time I took an economics class was freshman year of college, and I remember nothing about it. So whatever the economics of it, an ideal scene apparently has to have a statistic where the whole thing caves in, either from lack of continuity in time, from disinterest, or from plain lack of supply. Death is possibly, could be in part, a cessation of interest in production. So is he referring to just death of an organization being a cessation of interest in production? Hard-pressed, a living being dreams of some free time. Give him too much and he begins to crave action, and will go into production, and if blocked from doing so, will tend to cave in. Loss of a job depresses people way out of proportion, and subsequent declines often trace back to it. Destructive activities carry their own self-death. The state of veterans after wars is not always traced to wounds or privation. Destructive acts put a brand on a man. Some of this is answered by the absence of production. So it's about production and consumption. you got to have a ratio for production and consumption. And somehow you'll solve economics by finding this ratio. Yes, there's lazy people. People who don't want to work versus people who literally can't work. Um, people have fantasies of, of being rich, but not usually to the point that it's going to ruin their own lives. Giving their current male escorts a life of critical health. So, so do they have escorts or do they have husbands? And, and again, I still don't understand why you were interviewing secretaries in New York. There is no context to behind this. If your ideal drives you to do crazy things, then yes, I get it. Yeah, we know that workers, no working can't happen. People need to work. I don't know what Keynesian economics is. I still don't have a good idea. Apparently I have a statistic where the whole thing caves in. Either from lack of continuity in time, from disinterest, or from plain lack of supply. I mean, for most people, that that statistic is money. So, most businesses, have, well, all businesses, as far as I know, have statistics. So, everybody has statistics. Economics is not solved. He acts like a, a, a company, like this is new, like this is, this is new thinking. It's not. People have had statistics for years, decades, hundreds of years. And he's acting like, it, it sounds like he's acting like he came up with it for, by himself. Which, it doesn't surprise me knowing Hubbard. Before I end off, um, I do want to say one thing. That at some point during this series, I don't know when, if it's going to be halfway, towards the end, whatever. I do want to have a guest on uh, to talk about this. Now, this is someone who worked a lot with the data series. Um, he was a member of CMO. That's the Commodore's Messenger Organization. And he worked... A couple other posts, not not many posts like like a lot of Scientologists seem to have with the whole musical chairs and and being put from post to post. Now he managed to stay pretty consistent in his jobs for the time he was there, but he is very experienced in the data series as he had to use it a lot. And to be able to talk to him about this, I think will provide quite a bit of insight regarding Hubbard's methodologies. 
how CMO worked, how Sea Org missions work, and maybe some other things. But so all I have to say is like if you like the video, dislike if you don't. I don't really care. Comment with your feedback or questions, good, bad, or sideways, and subscribe to be kept up to date on future content. I'll talk to all of you later. See ya.